Hi, uh, welcome to Reality Check. My guest today is Stefan L. Stefan is a sales leader, member of advisory board, and he loves the church. But we'll talk today about the generative AI use cases. So Stefan, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, what do you think uh, about Gen AI? Is it just another popular term of the day or uh, you believe this is something real? Yeah, Ilya, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very glad to be here. And let me give you some background maybe to, to better understand. So I'm 25 years in tech industry. I come from an economics background, studied economics, but always worked in Silicon Valley companies, Cisco, Oracle, and some others. And so I had always focus on what is the latest and greatest in, in technology. At the same time, I'm a Christian and was very much involved in the church and what the church is doing, not only the local church, but also the global church. So visited um, a lot of Christian organizations, for example, um, some who work with the poorest in Mexico or a um, hospital in Malawi and, and uh, Bible translators and so on. So this was always a very important topic to me, but it was a very separate topic. There were two worlds I was living in, in a way. And with AI, this changed quite a bit because now I see there is a lot of potential for Christian organization, for churches to use technology, which was in, in the past not so super important. And with this, I want to advertise a bit, um, especially to the Christians to be a bit more open and proactive with technology because there's so much potential out there. This is amazing because you are the first person who connects technology and uh, uh, religion. So I've never yeah. had any any discussions uh, about that, but I really appreciate that you make your life whole. So you kind of uh, connect what you do professionally with your yeah. personal passion. Yeah, so, that's, that's what, uh, what I love to do. Yeah. It, it, it feels in, in fact a bit, um, I feel a bit, a, a bit special, let's say, spe special in a way in, in the business world because there is so little religion and in the Christian world because there's so little technology. Yeah? But combining both, I think there is huge potential in there. So I wonder, uh, when you talk about this topic, what do you hear back? What do people say? Both, well, uh, three, and... uh, both religious people, what do you hear back from them? And uh, uh, people that don't believe in God. So, what what's the from both sides? What do you hear? Yeah. So, um, Christians are usually quite conservative. Yeah. So there is um, they are not the early adopters on technology. Yeah. We've seen this a couple of times over the last uh, 10, 20 years. And when internet came, the last ones who, who came on board uh, were. And believers yeah and and church organizations and similar with social media or mo mobile uh, you, you name it each trend always takes takes a while to, to get adopted and therefore i think it's important to have good and strong use cases to understand where there is real value in and maybe this also answers your, your question on um if ai is to stay I, be, I believe AI is, is to stay because the, the benefits are so huge we are having in there. The benefits for companies are huge in there and also for a, actually for any organization and for any nation that, that works with AI can be so much more productive and with this gain wealth for the employees, for the shareholders, for the citizens, yeah, whoever is in there. And I think at the moment, it's it's a bit difficult to predict where AI is, is going to. So there are definitely also some areas where there is some hype in there in the moment, um, especially on the stock market. I think there are some valuations quite um, interesting, at, at least, yeah, or unusual. And um, if they can stay over, over time, we'll, we'll see, or if, if there will be some... Uh, if there's some some bubble in it but i think that the most interesting is to predict the future the easiest way is to look at the trends yeah what trends do we see and the trends from those trends we can predict what will happen 
And one of those trends I see that is becoming more and more personal, AI will be more an integrated part in, in our life. So Apple just announced um, their vision on AI and having and having it included in our data we are privately using, yeah, in our mail data, calendar data, um, to-do list. And with this, I think AI will become much more productive for, for each person. Um, having something to, to work with, having some, some pertinent, personal um, AI. And with this, um, AI will also be more proactive. Yeah. So at, at the moment, I put a task in my task list and I want to be reminded after a time. Um, but in future, it's, it's thinkable that AI will give me some recommendation what to, what to do. They say um, in, in the past, you, you called every week your parents. You didn't call them for, for two weeks. Um, how about calling them? Now? Yeah? Or, or other habits they see making prediction, making assumptions and helping with this organizing our day. This is very interesting because I heard the references to God uh, several times in my previous discussions. First of all, the term God ex machina has um, like for centuries exists already. So to my, from my perspective, the Gen AI is as close to God coming from uh, the computer um, or a, at least a being coming from a computer and talking to you uh, as it ever uh, been. And the second reference I heard was um, I had a conversation with the gentleman and he said, uh, you know, the AI will elevate us. Uh, if you are a developer, it will make you an architect. Uh, if you are an architect, it will elevate you to a God uh, status. So what's your view? What Gen AI will um, change in us? as human beings. So what's what's your perspective on that? Um, I think it will make us more productive, um, but it won't change us spiritually. Um, spiritual um, is another dimension, but it will definitely make us much more productive. So like electricity made, made us more productive, the internet made us pro more productive. And also here we haven't seen the end of AI yet. I think there is, um, it will be very interesting when we have an AI without a user interface like, like a monitor. At the moment, we are always uh, monitor de dependent. And in future, there will be other ways uh, to co communicate with us. I think it will be very interesting when it's becoming more physical, yeah, with, with robots, drones um, accompanying us. And um, I think there's also huge potential, which is not really seen yet on the blockchain side. Yeah, If AI is combined with blockchain, smart contracts having very different sorts of organization um, will be a, a special challenge, um, especially for, for those large organizations which are built on trust or which are which we need because we, we trust them. And in future, this could look much different and give big opportunities to very small entities there. So you don't believe it will make us better? More productive, yes. Better, not necessarily. Well, may, may, maybe better. Maybe may, may be better. Um, it has the potential to, to, to make us better. I think everything that we can measure, we can change, or it's, it's easier to change. Yeah. When I um, started with sports, I had no data. Only professional athletes had, had data. When I got data which explained me how to train better, how to um, when to run, how to how to run, and, and so on, and this helped me improve myself. And so I think also in in a way AI has the potential to help me um, uh, following my goals in an easier way. You know, I'm thinking about the education uh, and. Uh... Uh, on one hand, the people that work in the uh, educational uh, area are afraid of Gen AI because it's used to cheat. Yeah, it, it is used to um, generate texts without us being involved uh, intellectually. But I believe that Gen AI is the new way to teach. 
is a new way to learn. You can learn much faster. You can consume the information in so much more effective way. But yeah. uh, we have to change multiple organizations and multiple institutions that exist uh, for decades and hundreds of years, and then we can take advantage. Uh, of yeah. So I, th I think that's um, an important notion that we need not necessarily change ourselves, but change a lot of fundamental institutions around us uh, yeah. to take advantage of it. Uh, and that will be an inter interesting challenge. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I, I think it's similar to, to a knife. Yeah, you can use a knife to do something very good like a surgeon does or do something bad by, by killing people and so ai is is a knife which is an opportunity to, to do some something good and um, um a, a challenge uh, for the bad and so my my my, my idea is, or what, what I'm thriving for, is to convince um, uh, people, and especially the, the Christian church, to use the advantages and make the best out of it, yeah? Because the disadvantages will, will come anyhow, yeah? We, we can't um, get around them by ignoring AI, yeah? So, for example, one, one really, really big problem is that AI is used in some country to persecute Christians, yeah, to persecute a, a church, to, to find a, a people and to, to follow them. And we definitely don't want this, but by ignoring the benefits, um, it there is no advantage in this. And therefore, I think we should use all the benefits that are there and make the best out of it and um, go on from there. Excellent. So de describe to me the use case that you are most passionate about. So what what's... What drives you uh, in Gen AI? So tell me more. Yeah, there are there are a few actually um, that I'm really passionate about. Um, one of them comes um, a bit from, from your channel also, the, the digital human. I think this is a great idea to have the to, to have some like an avatar um, with com communication with someone who is not physical there. And this is um, for religious people or for Christians, um, this goes even a step further because the normal hero someone has are usually alive. Yeah. So if, if you want, if, if you follow sports, um, you know those people. You you can have an avatar from from, from them speak speak with the avatar. But in general, the idea is with a live person. So for Christians, um, a lot of our heroes don't live anymore. Yeah, If you take uh, Martin Luther King, for example, or Mother Therese. Um, however, they are very important for us to give guidance in nowadays problems. So I have a problem in my company and I would like to know how would Martin Luther King decide on this? Um, but I can't talk to him now. But with AI, I have the possibility to upload all information from him or, or writings from him or, or speeches from him and at the same time the AI knows about the general AI and the general AI environment I live in and could also get the personal environment I, I live in combine this data and with this I could ask Martin Luther King on what he thinks about some invent environmental issues or some problems I see at the moment which were not there at his time. Uh, the, the, this is uh, very interesting. Um, do you foresee uh, like uh, one model of Martin Luther King, or there will be a model of Martin Luther King talking to Stefan, or a model of Martin Luther King talking to Ilya? So uh, how? much of personalization do you see in and this models yeah that's that's a good question so if if those different models would all talk differently um then it would be a problem so the general concept needs to be the same and it can be the same because we have so much data from martin luther king that makes it uh, much easier however it could be personalized 
on my situation and um, your situation is, is a different one yeah so um, and de depending on the job i'm working in on the family situation i'm having um, i could ask him how to how to, to educate my, my kids for example who are growing up in this and that area so it could be very personal much more than it has been possible in the past where we just read the book and try to think about what are the main concepts behind it and put this concept in nowadays life. Aren't you afraid that uh, uh, any um, teaching amplified with Gen AI can be super dangerous? Can be what? Can be very dangerous. Um. No, I'm not. Okay, I'm not be, be, okay. because we we have those bases, and the the if the AI follows this follows the basis of of the writings, um, it shouldn't go too far too far away. I mean, it is obviously that an avatar Martin Luther King is is never the real one, and I've seen um. So, some pages who, who work with this and then have a big disclaimer on it. Yeah, please be aware this is only, this is only a digital human and may, maybe not um, a, a Mother Therese or whoever's um, real thoughts um, might be different. But I think in general, this should be an option to get much closer than it was before and to get a better understanding. Yeah, my, my concern comes from the fact that uh... Uh, while real Martin Luther King um, had uh, great ideas for the world, he was not aware of what's happening in your life. Yeah. The, the digital device that you, you, you're using knows so much about you, so much more about you. Yeah. That uh, can exploit that. Um, and uh, the same technology of creating Mother Teresa or... And Martin Luther King can be used to uh, recreate Pol Pot or Hitler, God forbid. So that's that's my concern here. So the, the creating the uh, like strong concepts, uh, strong intellectual concepts, uh, is uh, super interesting, but super dangerous. It is. It is. Um... But still, I would go back to the example with the knife. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many people killed with the knife. Uh, nevertheless, I, I'm glad that surgeons can use a knife, yeah, and they should. And it's it's good to have a knife. Yeah? If there would be the question, should we or should we not? Um, it's it's definitely clear. Um, there is no way around it. Yeah, the negative will will happen anyway. Why not using the the good then? Yeah. Okay. So um, um, other use cases. Yeah. 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 Let, um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe another one is um, Bible translation. So Bible translation is very important for Christians. It has been a top, top priority over 2,000 years now that Bibles got translated. We have it in German, we have it in, in English, in different languages. Um, however, 90% of the languages in the world don't have a complete Bible translation. Yeah, there are 7,200 languages in the world and only 740 have a Bible translation. And translating Bible is a very complicated um, thing um, for different reasons. Um, one of them is that the culture is very different. Yeah, So if you translate, for example, where the Bible talks about snow in, in a language where they have never seen snow, um, you need, need a different example. Yeah, And other is that a lot of those languages don't have any writing in any form. And so it took in the past 24 years to translate one Bible completely, yeah? Bible, a uh, big book, yeah? And taking this from, from Genesis uh, to Revelation is, is a very long uh, process, costing about one million for each translation. And with AI, this is now much, much easier. So for those languages in writing, I think that is uh, pretty obvious. This needs especially correction. And for those non-written languages, also this is uh, got much, much easier um, because you can use audio data, transcribe it, and with this start starting to get an LM model trained. 
and we are now on an average translation time of four years. So coming from 24 years down to four years, that is a huge advantage. You're also, also on a cost side. So bringing us a lot of benefit. And this is important for Christians um, because we, we are asked to, 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 to give it to, to everyone. And so many people worked on this in the past. Yeah, And now it looks like that we will complete the whole task after 2000 years work on this in a few years time. This is very, very interesting. Uh, from technology perspective, I find it fascinating. Not just the language translation, but taking into account how it was already translated into different languages yeah. and take into account different cultures and how cultures translate one to uh, into another. And if you add the books that had been translated to this language, besides Bible, and yeah. read that, that's that's amazing. This is like very, very exciting new tool that we have uh, to do the translation yeah. of context-aware, culture-aware translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I, I know a few linguists who, who work in different countries on Bible translation. And that is a very long process. Yeah, they, they start with zero and, and putting up a glass and asking them, what, what, what is this? R writing it down and word by word. So it takes um, years to, to get a complete, um, to, to, to get completed in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let, let me share one, one more use case. Sure. Yes, please. Yes. I really love. And um, I call it the spiritual coach. So we, we discussed earlier then that when we have data, that the data motivates us to change something. And if I wouldn't have a scale, I wouldn't do anything on for my weight. But I get a number on the scale, and so I see um, I should lose a bit, bit weight, and um, so I, I train a bit. And this could be also operated in different areas, like uh, spiritual areas. So if we think of an, a speaker, like Alexa is, is a speaker, and this would be a bit more intelligent with AI on it. I'm just <laughs> looking that it doesn't start uh, talking. Um, if, if this would be a bit more, more in, intelligent, it could start a conversation with me, um, how I am doing with my Bible reading. And I would say, uh, I just read Matthew 5, and it would ask me, um, do you want some context on it? And give me some, some additional context. But it co could also go a step further and ask me what it means for me personal. So in Matthew 5, it says, for example, love your neighbor. And then I could speak with... Um, with, with with this uh, loudspeaker on on it and um, what this could mean for, for me personal but as this ai knows a lot about la my life it could also give me some recommendations from where to do better so it could for example say um last tuesday when you were in the restaurant and um, you were not very respectful with the waiter what do you think about this so this would challenge me and challenge me in, in a good way to learn. And I want to learn uh, uh, to be more respectful, to do more what the Bible tells me to do. And it could teach me in a way only a close friend could teach me. Yeah, for that, you would need something. That, uh, uh, did you see Microsoft announce uh, the recall uh, feature yeah. in Windows? Yeah. But this will yeah. be recall for your life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rather than yeah, yeah. Well, they maybe, just work for your windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it should be deleted every, every few days. But <laughs> at, at least it would be an option to remind me on things because this is a, a key problem um, um, for Christians that we read it often in a theoretical way and are blind on some spots um, which we don't see, see ourselves, yeah, where, where we can improve. And with this, there would be a third person giving some advice how to improve and how to have it practical in, in my life to improve to the life I, I want to live. Yeah. Impressive. Thank you very much for sharing this uh, use cases. This is very fresh. Uh, this is very different from what I've been discussing so far, but uh, I really enjoy this. So uh, from your perspective, Stefan, um, uh, if you'd be doing a startup today, yeah. 
uh, what would you do? Um, that's a good question. So I think the the one of the key problems in or for startups now is to know what everyone else is doing. There is so much R and D done all over the place in AI that it's difficult to predict that you're not working on something where someone comes up the day after you you went public with this. Yeah, and so I would try to do something which is a bit which is a bit ahead of time. And I think one of the, so, so, so I, I wouldn't go, go to, to the things that are very obvious at, at the moment um, on, on apps, um, especially. There, there is a lot of development on, on apps already that I would be afraid to develop on something some, someone else that does at the moment too. But I think um, where there is a great market to, to come and great market opportunity, is on the physical AI yeah, with, with robots and drones. Um, there is a lot of potential to gain and a lot of value to create. So I just saw um, Tesla's um, humanoid um, robot uh, running, which, which was very, very impressive and how, how they do it. And I think there will be a lot of use cases around this. Yeah. So sometimes it were not the gold diggers who made the most money, but those who had the X and forks for the gold, gold diggers. Yeah? And so I could also think that maybe some managed services around this and consulting services around this um, could be a great opportunity because there will be, there is, there is definitely a, a huge potential for, for robots. Yeah? If you look in logistics, there's so much people work needed and cost for, for people work um, in there or in restaurants, yeah, waiters um, walking around um, all, all the time, which could be done partly at least um, by by robots, yeah, or could do some, some overfill by, by robots um, or even more in healthcare, in hospitals, yeah, where nurses are walking, I've heard they, they walk up to 10 kilometers a, a day um, just to get from the patient, uh, the medicine and, and backwards um, all, all the time. Yes, yeah, someone asks something and there's all to, 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 to always those long distances. And this could be easier done by a robot and giving the opportunity that the nurse would take care of the patient itself. Yeah, and not for walking distance because the patient also doesn't win anything while someone is walking around the floor. So. Yeah, uh, we, we talked in the past, uh, and uh, I believe uh, taking care of seniors, we yeah. will not have enough humans to, to do that. And yeah. that's obviously a very big topic uh, for the use of combination of robots and AI. Yeah. So somebody yeah. who can take you for a walk uh, yeah. or do your shopping or your cooking or cleaning, so um, having a um, uh, an personal assistant, both from technology perspective and physic in the physical world, that that's that's a, that has a huge potential. I agree with you totally. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's sometimes done the wrong comparison by asking, wouldn't it be better if a um, real person would walk with this elderly? And obviously that, that would be much better. But here is the question, does no one walk um, with, with the person or does at least um, a robot help somehow um, with the shopping or with whatever? Yeah, yeah and uh, to be honest, uh, robots are way more patient <laughs> than people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're getting old, our behavior is not getting better, unfortunately. Our moods are swinging, our uh, tolerance is reducing. Uh, yeah, our patience is disappearing. So somebody eternally patient and kind, um, yeah, is good to have. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm in general very optimistic about the future and um, what it brings to us with AI. Yeah? There, there will be definitely um, a lot of problems com coming up with it. But I think there are great opportunities for for everyone who who takes them. Excellent, uh, Stefan. Uh, thank you so much for a fresh perspective 
on Gen AI uh, and use uh, to, uh, that will help us improve our life, that will help uh, religious people to pursue their spiritual um, uh, journey. And uh, uh, everyone who is uh, still listening to us, please subscribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, other than that, um, let us know um, if you have any questions. Stefan and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Elia. Thank you very much.